You might have noticed in the last Baywatching Nights, I sounded a little, uh, dispirited. Bored. Counting down the seconds to when the season would be over. Grumpy, even. Well, thank God Rendezvous is here to brighten things up, aka the return of the informant slash random side characters he never gave a second thought to. Remember Ned Judd, that nerd who begged for a date with Donna to prove she's the new Pamela Anderson? Well, he's back! Except according to IMDb, this time his name is Ned Judge. This pales in comparison to the return I'm super excited about, and that's Pebbles Ronkin, my favorite extreme rollerblading bookie and Rainbow Bright villain. Things are really looking up on Baywatch Nights. I'm ready for a miraculous turnaround. Oh my god, please! Some nefarious embezzlement business is happening where this guy is supposed to have a car dropped off for him to escape with the money, and the weenie who dropped off the car comes back to get his jacket real quick. Things go super well for him. A cheap-ass jacket. What more your life, kid? Now, if it had been an Adidas jacket, then maybe. Man, that old lifeguard captain that worked with Mitch has fallen on some rough times. Speaking of rough times, Griff is having a Naya water photo shoot. There's a hilarious joke in there about only needing Donna's hand for the shot, but honestly, it's not even worth the sentence mentioning it. Pfft, what a couple of losers. Ryan and Mitch are meeting with old pal Ned from the FBI, who wants to have an innocuous meetup at his favorite fishing spot. Mitch mentions he's done them a heck of a lot of favors, so I guess off screen, Ned here has been a recurring character. Perhaps that's also where the hell they had the explanation as to who the hell Earl was. This time, Ned is the one who needs help. The FBI has been on the lookout for Bradley Thurman, who stole 100 million in bearer bonds and is currently in the area with a new plastic surgeried face. He's looking to kill his wife after she testified against him and take his daughter. They're having a bit of trouble finding him, so naturally, Ned turns to the lifeguard detective agency that does business in a nightclub turned bistro. What makes you think we can find him before you guys do? Well, you know the area. Yes, unlike Ned, who apparently lives here, frequently gives them intel, and fishes in the same spot every day. This lifeguard really knows the lay of the land. However, Mitch is far more interested in backseat fishing for Ryan. He's on, let him run. I am letting him run, but it could be- Right! Tighten the drag. Will you relax? Don't let him go underneath the pier. <laughs> How have I stayed single for so long? And now it's time for a Baywatch Nights family dinner. <laughs> Minus Hobie. All of this is just, like, a bizarre reason to have some stage business while Ryan spouts off the most generic of generic details about this Thurman guy. It's like every episode they describe the same egotistical cardboard villain who is somehow the most nefarious man they've ever encountered. They figure he's going to be laying low and buying off the street. Apparently, he is buying something. Drugs? I don't know. Up until this point, he was just an embezzler. Garner's got that covered like Granny's Quilt. I'm sure you can cover that. Like Granny's Quilt. This guy selling stolen goods grabs Garner by his jacket in such a way that it appears to be comically tiny on him, and he doesn't much care for that. No warrant, no way you're getting in there. <laughs> when the thief sold it to your boy, you didn't care about any of that! I mean... They could have recovered some of this stuff and returned it to their owners, but I guess not that TV. Oh, but he sure would be interested in a hot new set of wheels. Wait, wait. Please, the show can't afford you to actually wreck a car. This is amazing. Look, I mean, it's kind of over the top, but I'd just like to point out that this scene is the only part past the cold open so far that isn't people discussing off-screen intel they acquired, and that is a solid 18 minutes of screen time. Meanwhile, Griff decides to do a secret photo study of the life of Mitch Buchanan. This elevates Mitch to undeserved importance and is relevant to the plot, and it's pretty rare to have both in Baywatch Nights. He follows Mitch as he goes to talk to none other than Pebbles Runkin. Oh my god, the star power! Pebbles thinks the description he's given is a little vague, so while Mitch poses sexily, he breaks things down into specifics. Well, this guy be new, uh, you know, maybe less than a week. Pretty visible. And athletic. New, visible, and athletic? On a California beach? I think I got the guy you're looking for. Well, it's not as if the one piece of remotely useful info Mitch got is that Thurman is into racquetball, and he's currently talking to the bookie with his hands in every sport in Malibu, or Detective Lifeguard might seem kind of like a dum-dum for not asking about it. What about racquetball? Racquetball. 
Mitch, if Pebbles Runkin wasn't here to save your ass all the time, you'd be dead. Mitch is ready to totally wreck this guy at racquetball. Announce me, he orders Pebbles Runkin like a king. Announce me. Hey. I'm Griff. Ugh, damn it, Griff. This is perhaps the most hardcore racquetball game ever played. <laughs> Why was this show canceled? What a great scene! Half of it being shot from behind with obvious stunt doubles. Not now, not now. I got something going here. It's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. It's incredible. Mitch wins, of course, because he's the best at everything. This guy thought he was competitive, but he'd never met Mitch Pissy Pants Buchanan before. Super casually noticing a card in Thurman's possession for a club called Gizmos, Mitch wonders what the movie Gremlins has to do with anything. <laughs> Yeah, if you take pictures super obviously and then look away when they notice you several times within the span of one minute, you'll never get caught! I'm Griff! Oh man, that's embarrassing. Getting garbage canned by Griff, I'm Griff Walker? These guys can never show their faces to the other goons ever again. Stupid idiot! You stupid idiot! You stupid idiot! You're a stupid idiot! <laughs> I love that Griff shows up at nights to let everyone know what happened, and then they just pretend like he doesn't exist. Stupid Griff. You're a stupid idiot! I mean, but they're also stupid, because he says the man sent dudes to beat him up for taking his picture, and then everyone's like, still not sure if this is their guy? Like, I mean, that's probably a strong indication the dude is not the up and up. And I don't really understand this next scene at all. So Ned's FBI, right? He and Garner go to investigate another suspect, and Garner asks him how he would handle things normally. So he suggests a phone tap, a credit check, and building a file, and, and fine, that makes sense. Garner says they don't have time for this, and Ned asks how a local cop would do it, which isn't really accurate as Garner is no longer a local cop, but I digress. He says they'd get inside or get the suspect outside, which... I mean, you still need a warrant, unless there's imminent danger, and that also takes time. But Garner is, in fact, a PI, and none of this applies to him because PIs can't do shit. And Ned thinks breaking and entering would be bad, but maybe they could mess up his car, which doesn't seem any better. And Garner thinks that would be bad if the guy isn't guilty, as if you can just destroy property if the person who owns it is a criminal. But literally 10 minutes ago, we saw him destroying a bunch of stuff and nearly messing up a car. All of this is extremely pointless, however, because they see a couple of hookers go inside and decide that doesn't fit the profile, for some reason, and leave. Never to mention this suspect again. Anyway, here Here's Mitch with Ryan and Donna on each arm. <laughs> Hobie's with his mother. This is all part of Mitch's brilliant plan to have Donna catch the eye of a suspected murderer with her feminine wiles. What a cool and original idea. This was previously Ryan's job, but now her job is to be talked down to by Mitch. But right now, everyone is here to dance, dance, dance. Party, party, party. We're here to dance, dance, dance. Party, party, party. <laughs> Terrible. Apparently, by Donna dancing with this random man who came over and had nothing to do with anything, Mitch has successfully made Thurman jealous. I don't know what this really accomplished or how that confirms that that's their guy, but I don't really care at this point. The only thing that stayed with me about this episode is Donna's interminably long dance scene, because it's hilariously bad. Mitch tells Ryan to call in the cavalry and get the hell out of there with Donna, because this is men's work. But wait, don't you want us to be here when all the action starts? That's right, I don't. The male ego is a disease. Ryan's backstory is that she started her own agency after a guy took all the credit for her work. It just came to my mind, no reason. Well, do you want to dance? No, I don't. Shut the hell up, Ryan! I love you! La 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 la, I'm a police academy now! Did you, uh... I had no idea. She's wonderful. Block, block, bitch! my pants laughing at this dramatic intercutting between Donna's stupid ass Elaine dance and Thurman's family being taken away to be murdered. I mean, <laughs> what is the tone they're going for? Yeah, do the Donna! So where's your guy? Right over. 
Congratulations, Mitch. You failed at your one job tonight. It takes them until the next morning, apparently, but they find Thurman and his family at an airplane hangar. I'm glad we took the Donna dancing detour. Yeah, like a cat. I fail to see why Mitch told Griff to call for backup, then went inside alone, then didn't wait for said backup before swinging into someone like lifeguard Tarzan, but who am I to question the world's greatest detective? Ah, yes, all those empty airplane parts boxes you always see lying around hangars like this. I'm Griff! I'm hungry! Thanks for nothing, Griff. You know, with all this punching murderers we're doing, I can't help but feel like we're forgetting something. Whoa, 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 whoa. can I stop dancing yet? Next time on Baywatch, it's Kay's last episode! Incidentally, remember Kay. Meanwhile, Stephanie remembers her cancer. Bummer! Watch as we slide.